hopefully just a very short video here on polyprotic acids. Short is the key word. I'm going to make it short. I'm make it quick. So if, if I have an acid with a hydrogen listed first in the formula, hinting to me that the hydrogen dissociates or comes off of, uh, pulls apart from, or, um, you know, transfers over onto water away from the other stuff, um, there's a chance it could be a polyprotic acid. I guess supposedly, technically, sulfuric acid is a polyprotic acid. H2SO4 is the formula. It's the strong acid that's polyprotic. But um, a little bit complicated because the second proton is not s nearly as strong as the first proton. So actually, what we'll do We'll brush it under the rug for now and say, what about phosphoric acid or arse arsenic acid? Arsenic, arsenic, arsenic acid, arsenate, phosphate, um, H3PO4, H3AASO4, um, citric acid's polyprotic as well. There are many other weak acids that are polyprotic. By that we mean just, you know, more than one proton. We can write a series of equations, uh, stepwise dissociations of the polyprotic acids, like you take the full acid molecule here, equilibrium arrow, H plus, and whatever conjugate base you get when you take off an H plus of this. Then we turn around and write that species that was the conjugate base of this acid as the reactant in the next step of the stepwise dissociation, H2. ASO4 minus and equilibrium arrow and another H plus comes off and H ASO4 2 minus. So the negative keeps increasing and we keep decreasing decreasing the hydrogen ion by one. Excuse me. Um, in the last step we have that conjugate base of the previous step as the acid and it dissociates and we're left with no more hydrogens. In any case the constants almost always end up looking something on something something like this. The Ka1 is almost always big, big, big. This the Ka, this Ka1 is almost, almost uh, 10, 10, let's see, four zeros, 10,000, but it's about half, so maybe 5,000 times bigger than this one. And this one is um, almost 10,000 times bigger. No, it is 10,000 times bigger than this one. So since the Ka1 is almost always super big as compared to the other Ka's, so the constant for this dissociation is small compared to the first one, and the constant for this dissociation is super duper uber small compared to the first one, and just darn small compared to the second one. Super duper duper is a technical term, and darn is pretty technical too. So these, these constants for these two are very small. So if I was trying to find out what the pH of this arsenic acid is in water, I just treat the first equilibrium equation as the only one that happens for practical purposes to at least two or three sig figs, ignoring the others. Here's the math that that would entail. Just like we've always been doing, we have a beginning concentration of the acid, the unknown dissociation called them X's. Assume X is small here compared to 0.1 to make our lives a little bit simpler. So this is equal to this, but assume that is small. What? I didn't assume X is small. Did I not assume? I didn't assume X is small. You know what? I think that's probably because... I was worried about this constant, 10 to the negative 4, being not as small as it usually is. Let's see, what is 0.005-ish uh, compared to the initial, this is the percent uh, extent of the dissociation, ionization. What's 0 0.005 over 0.1? Oh, 0 0.005-ish over 0.1 is 0.05 and 0.05 is 5%, and 5% is right on the border of that rule of thumb saying if the dissociation is less than 5%, we can assume x is small. Well, I could have assumed x is small, and I would have gotten an answer, of course, a little bit le a little bit different than this, but I suppose I was being, you know, picky about the whole thing. In any case, um, the other constants that we could write for the second dissociation would be for this, with the H plus and then this species on the top and this on the bottom, 
Or if we wanted to write the Ka3 for the third dissociation, it would be this species on the bottom and H plus on the top and the other conjugate base on the on the top as well. <clears throat> and of course that number was small, small, super small. The only time we would need to use or consider these other two equilibria is if, say, in the future, pretty soon, we're going to think about buffers. I could make a buffer with potassium dihydrogen arsenate and potassium monohydrogen arsenate, and in which case I would get a pH if I had a one-to-one. -one, uh, you don't know about buffers anyway yet. So if I was wanting to make a buffer with a pH close to um, 8-ish or something like that, I might actually choose this combination of salts with this salt and this salt in aqueous solution. And we'll talk about buffers later. I said this is going to be a short video, didn't I? <coughs> Excuse me, Lord. I have a frog in my throat. I swallowed my rotter. My rotter. I swallowed my water. Ah, who knows what happens in this office when nobody's around. I'm talking to my computer. People think I'm crazy. I think I'm going crazy. Oh yeah, so here we go. Ka1 is larger than Ka2, which is larger than Ka3. You probably could say Ka1 is much, much larger with a double larger than symbol. And we could also say that Ka2 is much, much larger than Ka3. In almost all cases, we ignore the Ka2 and Ka3. Right above, we calculated that the... Um, oh yeah, so if this concentration was 0.1 to begin with, it comes down just a little bit to create some hydrogen ion. That's what we calculated. And this one would come, this one, this one, and this one come from the dissociation of this one. So if we start with 0.1 molar of this, this one comes down to 0.095 molar, this goes up to 0.005 molar, this goes up to 0.005 molar, close enough to one sig fig. But um, in any case, if we do further, we could carry the calculations further using this data in another equilibrium uh, ice table calculation to get this one and get this one. Um, but it takes forever and it's not worth it because look at this 10 to the negative 8 to the negative 18. These concentrations are super small. Maybe in a different course we think about that. And this OH minus concentration is simply dependent on this H plus concentration. So if I know this, I can get the pH of this, get the POH of that to 10 to the negative POH. Okay, there you go. I'm shutting up. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in class all too soon.